All right, welcome to the Ravid Show. Look who I have with me, Omar. Uh, super excited to have you on the Ravid Show. It's been long due. We've been, I, I think, connected on LinkedIn since years, but finally we get to meet. And I'm super excited to host you here at Big Data London. It's day two, and I met you yesterday as well. I know uh, you've been like chatting with so many leaders out there. You've been doing panel discussion talks. So super excited to chat with you about various topics around data, AI. and much more you've been in a leader in the space for a long long time so uh, excited to chat with you excited to learn a little about what you've been working on uh, what's new in the space what do you think about data and analytics but just for audience would you like to quickly introduce yourself tell us more about what you're doing right now sure ravid uh, finally we met after my many years and and that too in person which usually doesn't happen <laughs> uh, but it's uh, great to be here at yeah. uh, big data london Uh, I don't know if the audience can hear it's buzzing out there right now. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been in the industry for past 24 25 years now. Exactly. Always in data in different roles. Uh, right now I'm working as the head of data and analytics, chief data and analytics officer for a company called Jivadon. Before that uh, I was with life sciences industries with Roche, with Novartis. Uh, I'm living in Switzerland, visiting here for Big Data London and uh, glad to be here to meet people. Yep. learn from others uh, and reconnect like yourself so thank you for having me today it's uh, such a pleasure to see you in person and definitely your experience speak volumes to us in you we've seen the content that you share and obviously the work that you've done in space so thanks for taking the time out and chatting about this also kind of excited to learn a little about you know the trends that you've been seeing i know you've been here yesterday as well and i i think you attend most of the big data landings whenever uh, it's possible for you so this year what do you see in terms of uh, from the discussions that you you've had at big data london but in general what are the trends that you're seeing in uh, data and ai and i know ai is everywhere we're seeing it uh, everywhere but kind of excited to learn yeah, a little you, you said it ravid uh, ai is clearly everywhere we see it in products we can see it in different product features out there we see a lot of customer sessions on ai uh, not just gen ai but the whole category of ai out there uh, and it's also great to see that practitioners are coming forward with how they are implementing these tools uh, evaluating large language models moving into more agentic ai examples it right. is fantastic to see all of those practices uh, i am also delighted to see that thanks to ai we are also realizing the importance of good quality data that needs to be fed into these ai models True. and uh, almost everyone i talk to have a different story to tell uh, where are they with that journey what do they think that what is this ai ready data means or not and uh, there is no perfect answer uh, i'm also trying to understand how to apply that to the unstructured data with documents with uh, with voice with images so it is it's great to see all of this happening here with fellow practitioners uh, and also a lot of solution providers who are there offering support i love it and uh, those are fantastic insights uh, you kind of hit the nail right there because i kind of uh, was recently having a chat with a few enterprise leaders like yourself and uh, that was something which came up uh, a lot when it you know when we were doing the session and they were like we all you know in 2020 at the start of the 2024 everyone was talking about the ai implementation the adoption right and uh, slowly and steadily they kind of also started realizing that oh we we talking about ai which is fantastic but then to get that ai implemented or adopt that we need to have data quality in place we need to work on the data observability piece a lot of uh, those kind of conversations happen so thanks for sharing that uh, also kind of curious to know i know obviously uh, in in your 24 years of journey you've used so many tools so many uh, solutions out there what are you most excited about currently any current favorites or anything that you would like to share well uh, i think tools come in come and go yeah. that's the nature of it um, i i get recently more excited about how people are learning the different techniques it's more about the people side the skills and capabilities because right. that is something that needs to change hmm the tools are evolving at a very rapid sp- uh, space of course more and more cloud saas offerings are out there yeah. so there is a clear shift from being on premise to saas 
and I can see that provides flexibility, agility to the companies which we need. And I also see a trend that most of the offerings are around you are not duplicating and replicating your data all over the place. Yeah. So this whole data fabric type of approaches, uh, the iceberg format is finally becoming real, which yeah. allows this uh, data sharing in, in a virtual way, which is fantastic. Yeah. So these are some of the things that I think will set all the organizations and enterprises up for uh, good success uh, with AI and also whole spectrum of data use cases out there. Yeah, no, I think those are fantastic insights and in, uh, you touched on some important points there. So thanks for that. Also kind of curious to know from your point of view in terms of the, you know, the adoption and implementation coming together. Any challenges that you kind of currently see and that you would like to share with our audience today? Actually, uh, the, the downside of having all these tools is adoption. <laughs> because uh, people need to adopt, right? And when it comes to people, we are talking about essentially change management. True. So if there is a business problem we need to solve, we need to solve a pain point of an end user, we need to understand that it's not just about throwing a tool, it's about proper, properly managing to change right. from A to state B for example. We need to manage how we will do the training in different shapes and format. We need to be clear why we are doing this. Exactly. Uh, sometimes it's a cost efficiency business case. Sometimes it's a missing capability. So we need to be aware of that. We need to talk about this as well. Of course, these tools help. Uh, another thing I would hi highlight is uh, the, the flexibility and the mm. agility the people need to keep learning. Because the, the the pace at which these changes are happening is amazing. Right. We can see this in our consumer grade AI solutions. Every second week there is a new product coming out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and how do we keep up with that pace? How do we keep up learning about these things so that they benefit us? And that's yeah. where you know the key key to success is, I think. Very important points that uh, those are. So thanks for that, Omar. Also kind of uh, curious to know about a little about the future as well. Any predictions, anything that you have in mind? I know uh, it's like, like you mentioned, things are evolving very quickly. It's like every, every every month I see so many tools, like you say every maybe quarter, right? So, but any predictions, anything that you predict for the future? So the prediction life cycle has now reduced to a week now, I think, <laughs> uh, instead of a year. Um, no jokes apart, and, and this is of course my limited you, I, I don't know uh, everything out there. I think there is a lot of potential in the way this Gen AI chatbots are evolving into this agentic AI. Mm. Quite quite an upgrade from classic RPA to a more agentic stuff which is powered by large language models True. or even small language models. I see a lot of potential there. Yeah. You can really create your co-pilots, your concierge, your assistants to help the business people do their job in a much better way or expand your customer base with the same number of people right. as well. So right. that's I think will be very key. Um, I'm hopeful that this uh, attention on AI will continue to drive investment on making your data robust. Uh, the investment in data quality. Right. I'm hopeful that that trend will continue. Yeah. Which is going to be which is going to be amazing. Um, and you you never know what's going to come next. That's uh, that's how f far I'm looking at things. <laughs> You're right. right now. You're right. Things kind of move very quickly, and uh, you know, and obviously we are in that uh, world where everything kind of comes up, innovations happen very quickly. So, can't wait. Uh, one last question I have for you is, and definitely the, for the audience, if they want to reach out to you, if they want to learn, if they want to follow your content that you share, where can they do that? So, I think uh, in this context, LinkedIn is a great place to reach out to me. Fantastic. Uh, I try to write when I'm, I would like to share something. That's not awesome. A, not a regular blogger or anything, but I think as a practitioner in the data world, uh, I consider we need to grow the community together. Right, right. And sharing what we have learned, learning from each other is a great way to do that. Yes. So uh, I look forward to uh, hear from others. Yes. Uh, and uh, just like our today's talk, uh, uh, great to, uh, looking forward for much many collaboration and 
conversation with other people. Yes. As well. No, I I appreciate your time for uh, today, and obviously, thanks for you know obviously sharing all the great insights, Omar. I'm very happy we did this, and I'm definitely looking forward to keeping the conversation going. We'll chat more uh, next time when we meet. But uh, thanks again for doing this. Yeah. Thank you very Likewise. much. Thank you, Ravi. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you, Thank everyone. You.